Hey, it's John from Jesus Flicks, and today I am reviewing Southern Gospel. In Southern Gospel, Samuel Adam, a 1960s rock star, finds himself in jail after struggling with years of anger and blame toward organized religion that has led him down a road of rebellion. In a moment of divine intervention, the judge dismisses drug charges. We're going to talk about that divine intervention thing here in a minute. The judge dismisses drug charges against him under the pretense that Samuel speaks to local schools and churches about the dangers of drugs. Given a second chance, he follows in his father's footsteps to become a preacher, overcoming the influence of a powerful church leader with personal vendetta against his family. Southern Gospel is the story of a man overcoming brokenness and never surrendering the dream on his journey to find the Gospel. I do want to mention before I get into my review that this movie deals with some very real but sensitive topics. It deals with drug abuse, um, it deals with sexual abuse, uh, and it deals with suicide. So if you have young people who you don't want to have that conversation with yet, or you are triggered by those things, you probably want to check out the uh, IMDb Parents Guide to know when those scenes come up. And so you can either skip them or be prepared to talk about them. Okay, so I got to see this before it's in theaters. It's going to be in theaters on March 10th. So if you want tickets, there will be a link in the description of this video, as well as over on my website, strugglingforpurpose.com. Uh, I enjoyed this movie. Let's just get that out of the way before we get into any, any other details. I did like this movie. One of the things that I really liked about it is that it did not avoid difficult situations and difficult conversations. A lot of times, and that's really kind of at the heart of this movie, we tend to gloss over the problems that people have and the struggles that people have even after they come to know Christ. And it just gets kind of overlooked. And this movie really shows that we're not all perfect. We don't meet that perfect standard, but yet God can still use us. So this movie stars Max Eric, who has been nominated for Emmys. He's an Emmy-nominated actor. He was on The Young and the Restless and The Dome. Uh, it also stars Caitlin Nacon, who was in The Walking Dead, and J. Alphonse Nicholson, who was in Pea Valley and Just Mercy. We're going to go through our matrix. The matrix is up on the screen right now, just so you remember that. All right, so let's dig into the story. I found this story very compelling and believable. Some of the sequences and the timing were a little, um, seemed a little rushed and hurried, but you've got in, you know, an hour and a half to two hours to tell someone's life story pretty much. So things have to be compressed, compressed and condensed. So I understand that. I thought the way that the story transferred from one season to another season in Samuel's life worked out great. One other thing I found that was very interesting about this story is this is based in the 1960s and 60s and 70s. And in the South, there were a lot of churches that still were not integrated. And I was surprised to find out that Barry, who was Samuel's best friend, a black man, was in a church with mostly uh, white people. And I was surprised that they didn't take maybe five or 10 minutes to touch on uh, the racial divide that was in the South and maybe how some people in churches didn't want a black man coming into their white church. Now, I don't know if that's the case or not, if that really happened um, that way, if there were people who felt that way, but it would have been interesting to explore that, like I said, for maybe five to 10 minutes in, in a scene or two. All right, so the characters, I found the characters compelling. I found that I was really rooting for the characters. And again, based on a true story, based on actual events. And so people's real lives are very interesting. 
And when you can tease that out, when you have a good writer and a good director who's directing the actors, you get a really solid character arc for many of the characters. There's a twist in the story in, in with one of the characters, like in the last third of the movie that was really surprising to me. Well, I guess it wasn't surprising, but um, I was surprised, I guess, that it didn't come out earlier because I kind of presumed that that was going on. I'm not going to give anything away. So yeah, I was very pleased with the characters, the way the real life people were turned into the characters into the movie. So let's talk about the execution of the movie. I thought the acting was wonderful. I thought it was just, it was on par with what you would expect in a feature film. I thought the cinematography was good and that the audio editing was good. Again, no scenes where, well, it did seem like when the music was being sung, it didn't always seem like it was recorded live in the room where it was. It was all sounded like it was done in a studio, which I think is understandable. This was um, filmed during COVID, so they probably did a lot of studio work and I would assume some ADR as well. Most of the ADR I didn't really feel like um, there were there were issues with. It just was in some of the scenes where Samuel Allen was singing at times. Speaking of which, there were original songs that were written for this movie and Max Eric sings the songs in this film. So it was really interesting to find out that he sang the songs in the movie. And I think that really added a touch of authenticity to the movie. And I would imagine that was kind of part of the casting is they probably wanted to find someone who could sing and they in fact did. And I thought he did a great job singing. I can't remember if I mentioned the directing yet, but I did, I did think the directing was done well. Um, you know, a good director often will give guidelines and let the actor act, do their craft. And I think these actors were very good at their craft in this film. So the themes in this movie, themes of redemption, themes of having to deal, I don't know how you would phrase this with one word, but themes of having to deal with um, religious, overbearing rules and religiosity, I guess you could say, are in this film. And I thought they were covered quite well. Uh, themes of having uh, to deal with struggles that not everyone who comes to know Christ is going to immediately overcome all of their vices, whether it's drinking or some kind of sexual addiction or anything like that. They may struggle with it through their entire life of Christ and go through this long process of sanctification and maybe not be delivered until they go to meet Christ. So, yeah, it, it deals with these real issues that I think many people in the church struggle with and we want to kind of sweep under under the pews, if you will, and let them hide there. All right, so finally, what is the kind of overarching uh, spiritual principle that we see in this film? Well, it's the idea of redemption. One key scene in the movie involves Samuel Allen talking about the prodigal son. And that is a big thing here. Redemption and, you know, basically forgiveness. Uh, so I mentioned at one point that I wanted to talk about uh, wh where in the synopsis it talks about how uh, it, it was a, a divine intervention that got him off. Well, Actually, what it was, was this church leader who wanted Samuel Allen's father to stop pastoring his church. And so he knew the judge and cut a deal. So I wouldn't call that divinely inspired. Uh, but, you know, people have to, I guess, promote 
things. I, th that was the one thing that I would say if you're reading any synopses about this uh, movie, I, I would say that was divinely inspired. Maybe you could say that God used that situation, but not that it was divinely inspired. So redemption and forgiveness. Yeah, I mean, we're dealing with difficult um, topics. We're dealing with struggles that people have. And this process of sanctification after salvation, it happens in all of us. We're all going to go through things and situations where we're going to feel like, oh my gosh, I messed up again. How do I keep going? Is God ever going to use me? And there's one particular character in here who struggles with that throughout the film. And it is just amazing to me uh, how they represent it. There's a very, very powerful scene um, with this character. And I'm not going to give anything away about it, um, but... Man, it was it to me. It was it was very powerful. All right, so I want to encourage you to buy your tickets to see Southern Gospel. We need to support these good Christian films that have been coming out lately. Southern Gospel is one of them, and I think you're really going to enjoy it. It it will be money well spent. Now I also have a giveaway that's going on for a ten dollar Amazon gift card. Head over to my Instagram account. And all you got to do is follow the instructions that are in that Instagram account. I'll put a link to my Instagram account. It'll be the pinned, um, it'll be the pinned post that's there. And follow those instructions and you'll be entered in for an opportunity to win a $10 Amazon gift card. This is only open to U.S. residents. I'm sorry about that. So until next time, my name is John from Jesus Flicks and I'll talk to you later. Bye.